More bad news from the lockout as spring training has officially been delayed a week. We're talking about the bad news from the lockout as well as what does the impact mean for the St. Louis Cardinals? Breaking down my thoughts on that on today's episode of Locked on Cardinals. You are Locked on Cardinals, your daily St. Louis Cardinals podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Locked on Cardinals for February the 18th. I am Lucas Smith, your host for the show. Thanks for tuning in today. Apologies for the lack of episodes this week, but sadly, we got to talk about some bad news today on this episode of Locked on Cardinals as we have more, more news regarding the MLB lockout and the negotiations or lack thereof negotiations, I should say, between the Major League Baseball Players Association and MLB talk about all that as well as we're going to talk about how it impacts the St. Louis Cardinals and how it impacts the free agent market and things of that nature. Uh, So fun discussions today about a not fun topic. If you missed the news as we go ahead and get right into it, uh, the two sides met yesterday. They met for around 15 minutes where a lot of the reports, there was no deal. And then it came out shortly thereafter. And the big news of today is spring training will be delayed at least until March 5th. I believe is the date, Um, then it's just more bad news for the sport that can't seem to avoid having uh, having bad news spun its way. Um, We knew this was a possibility in terms of delaying spring training, and it is indeed March 5th as I double-check it right there. Um, But for, for it to come to fruition, for it to be a reality now as we start to set in with the realistic opportunity as it gets closer, now this was supposed to be a week of of happy things. It was supposed to be a week of pitchers and catchers already being in camp. It was supposed to be a week of everybody reporting to camp, and spring training was going to be in just a couple weeks. And now come to find out it is not to be at least for a little while longer. Um, we thought maybe we are going to have some good news with some meetings this week, and it just did not happen. Um just more bad news, as I mentioned. This this is a is a lockout. There's no really such thing as a good lockout in any sport, if you ask me. But nevertheless, this lockout comes at a really bad time, and I've talked about it a lot on this show of the timing of this lockout um, and, and how baseball really can't afford to lose any more fans. You know, we we all know how the the lockout and the strike of '94 and '95 turned out, and how fans really turned away from the game. Fans really. Didn't watch again until some until 1998 when McGuire and Sosa went on their race for the home run crown. And then again until Bonds a couple years later. And some fans still haven't come back at all entirely. And at a time when sports in general, but baseball especially, are losing fans left and right. Not a very good look when you have two sides that are fighting over money. And again, from the outside perspective, fighting over money as millionaires and billionaires fighting over money. And you have them saying, well, they're not negotiating in good faith. Well, they're not negotiating in good faith. We did this. We did that. They didn't do this. They didn't do that. It's just a blame blame game back and forth. And it's part of it, political side of it. You got to play the game. You know, it, but at, at the same time, when, when you get down to it, you're you're hurting your fan base. And yes, the, the, the millionaire baseball players, of which there are plenty, are going to be fine. Right, but it is the minor leaguers that that suffer from this. It is the forty-man roster guys that aren't quite on the major league cusp yet, but on the forty-man that are suffering. It's the guys that are getting paid league minimum that are suffering. It's not just the the veteran guys that aren't getting paid. It's it's not just the guys that are having their service time manipulated. It it, it hurts a lot of people. This is hurting the sport in general, and it's hurting a lot of people in general as well. And again, we. I, for maybe for, for, for no reason, but I did expect some good news to come this week. They're meeting again. You had the federal mediator mess behind them. You you weren't going to have to worry about that. You just had two sides that could come together and negotiate, get a, get a deal done and spring training. Maybe it would have had to have been delayed, but if, if you have a deal in place, then you say, okay, we've got a deal in place. It came in late. Let's push spring training a week. Then that's not a big deal. 
But because you have no deal and you're pushing spring training back a week, that is when you start to fall into the problem of, oh my gosh, this is a terrible thing for the sport. Because again, if you have a deal in place, you say, okay, no longer locked out, teams can sign, you can contact your players, you can meet, you can train, whatever it is. You say, because of the length of the lockout, because of the timing of it, we're still going to push back a week, maybe even a week and a half. You can still have a little bit of confidence in that and say, okay, it's okay. We have a deal in place. It's going to be fine. But now that you have no deal in place and seemingly no, not any closer to a deal than you were beforehand, now is when you start to get to the realm of opening day is in real jeopardy. You know, there was a soft deadline set for February 28th by Major League Baseball and Rob Manfred in his comments last week. Um, a lot of people think probably closer to, to March 3rd or March, you know, that second week of March is when you're really starting to get into the, the danger zone or no matter what, if you get to that late, then you're locked out. But regardless, we're getting dangerously close to pushing the season back. And if you push the season back a week or two, you're still able to get 150 some odd games. And maybe even you're still able to squeeze 162. You still have this lingering effect of the lockout once the season starts. We'll talk about that more in just a little bit. But what I'm saying is what it's what everybody has been saying, but I think now it's starting to come to fruition. Now we're starting to have to sit with it. Is that season starting on time, opening day being March 31st, seems less and less likely by the minute. And it just seems less and less likely with every bit of news we get regarding this lockout. It's just just unfortunate. There's no other way to put it other than it being 100% unfortunate. We're getting dangerously close to, to having a season pushed back and having a delayed season. Uh, again, I, I don't think that we're going to have any... Um, have any... Th- talks of no season. I don't think a season will be canceled by any stretch of the imagination. I think everybody wants to play. It's not like this lockout started in February. It started the first or second day or first week, second day of January of December. We've had all this time. So it's not like it's just starting within the last month or so. It's I think 79 or 80 days of lockout thereabouts. So not good news, no matter how you spin it. Um, And this affects a lot of people, as I've mentioned. So that's going to kind of do it for for the opening thoughts of it. We're now going to kind of get into who this affects in terms of the Cardinals standpoint, as well as talk about scheduling and things of that nature. Just more general thoughts on this this news of the lockout pursuing. Uh, But before we do that, uh, football season might be over. Had a good Good run, great playoffs with the NFL, but basketball is in full steam for the pro and college troops. All-Star Weekend is here for the NBA. From all the latest odds, totals, play performances, props, and to where to the next coach is going that has been fired, BetOnline.net is the number one spot for all of your sports betting needs. BetOnline remains the best spot for all of your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. And it's not just basketball. BetOnline.net is your source for hockey, boxing, UFC, and odds right to the Olympic coverage and information as well. Head over to the website today. Use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet online. It's where the game starts. So not only do we worry about the, the, the start of the season when we think about the lockout, when we think about no CBA, when we think about you know delaying, but there's also the matter of the fact that we have a lot of free agents yet to be signed. We have a lot of trade candidates that have yet to be traded. And it'll be interesting interesting to see, excuse me, where exactly the market goes when this lockout is over. Because now, you know, at the beginning of the lockout, you go, well, if it ends in a month, then it won't be, you know, won't affect it too much. If it ends in February, then it affects it a lot. If it ends in March, then it affects it a ton. Now we're saying, okay, it's going to affect the market. Whenever the lockout ends, whether it's by some by some miracle tomorrow or even next week, if the lockout ends then, there are going to be a flurry, excuse me, a fury of signs, whichever word is escaping me at the moment. But there are going to be a ton of signings made and moves and transactions made immediately after because especially now with the point we are at now, you're going to have a, a deal made between Players Association and Major League Baseball. And then you're going to have spring training very shortly thereafter. Because, yes, it got delayed a week right now, but even, it, it could be delayed another week, but 
if it stands at where it's at right now, you're going to have to have time to get pitchers and catchers to report. You're going to have to have time to get players to come in and report, schedules filled out, signings to be made, things, transaction, things, process. It's going to be absolutely chaotic. And it might be, it, I think it'll depend on the situation, but it'll be inter- interesting to see case by case who has the leverage. Does the player have the leverage or does the ownership group does the team have the leverage you might say the team because you're saying hey we're getting real close to the lockout or to the season here we're just going to go without you if you're not going to sign with us so the player might have to take a deal that is less amount of money but also the player might have the leverage because the player might say hey you're not the only team that needs me especially as, we, as we're this close to the season a lot of teams need me as um as a marquee shortstop, as a back end of the reliever, as a number two or an ace pitcher. A lot of teams need me. So you can either make me a better off or I'm going to go somewhere else. I think it'll depend case by case, situation by situation. And honestly, personality of the player and personality of the player's agent, you know, situation, case by case basis. In terms of the free agent signings and what the Cardinals might do or not do, it really impacts the bullpen, in my opinion. Because right now, you're at a net loss in terms of the bullpen. Because, yes, you got TJ McFarland back. That is great. You're down Andrew Miller, and you're down Luis Garcia. Andrew Miller not going to resign as a lefty, and Luis Garcia signed a deal with the San Diego Padres right before the lockout ended. Or, excuse me, right, right before the lockout started. So the Cardinals, and it's been reported many, many times, the Cardinals' uh, number one priority will be to go get a high-leverage reliever. We've seen a lot of... People wanting the Cardinals to go after a Joe Kelly. A reunion with Joe Kelly. I did an episode on that a while ago. And I think that that would be a great move for the Cardinals. You replace Luis Garcia. And you got a lot of young fireballers and there. A lot of young guns. Ryan Helsley. Genesis Cabrera. Alex Reyes might be back in there. Jordan Hicks. Cody Whitley. Even... You have a lot of young guys, excuse me, even Giovanni Gallegos could be considered young, although he seems to be a little bit more battle-tested and mature than the other guys that I mentioned. But it might be nice to have Joe Kelly, a little bit more of a veteran presence, a guy that has won a World Series, a guy that has been to a World Series with the Cardinals, won at a lot of different stages in his career in a lot of different roles. Because remember, he was a starter on the Cardinals World Series team, and he was a reliever on the World Series championship team he was on. So he knows how to win. He knows how to go out there and do his business. So I think a Joe Kelly reunion could be nice. It's just a matter of, again, how quickly are the Cardinals going to need to be? Because the Cardinals historically are not necessarily a quick pull the trigger on any deal type of team. Now, they have still been doing their due diligence and their research on these different things throughout the offseason, I'm sure, and have a good idea of where they want to go. But at the same time, you got to think to yourself, it's going to be fast and furious. They're going to be a lot. Every team in Major League Baseball, every single one is going to want to improve their bullpen. Every single one. And bullpen pieces are going to be a hot commodity once this lockout ends. And I think it's just going to be, it's going to be like the days preceding the lockout. You had Simeon get signed. You had Seager get signed. You had John Gray get signed. And so many others that, that, they, they escape. Steven Matz even signed days before the lockout started. You have a lot. You had a lot of movement right before that lockout started. It's going to be the same, if not busier, than it's going to be the same, if not busier, when it ends than when it started. You had Baez sign as well. That's another one that just came to mind. The bullpen for the St. Louis Cardinals needs to be priority number one. Yes, that's a priority over a designated hitter. Yes, that is a priority over a Shortstop. Yes, that is a priority over a bench bat. Because the bullpen, when we saw that falter in the 2021 regular season, it really faltered. And yes, there were times when the offense didn't hit. Don't get me wrong, that absolutely happened. But a good bullpen makes all the difference in the world in October. And in regular season as well. But if the Cardinals have Card- Cardinals have World Series championship aspirations, as I believe they should have those kind of aspirations. Then you need a solid back end of the bullpen. Period. End of conversation. No questions asked. So the Cardinals, I think, you know, as soon as the, the deal is signed, you get approval from the owners, you get approval from the players. Deal is signed. CBA is agreed upon. Go sign your players. Priority number one needs to be the bullpen. 
Joe Kelly is a great option since you need a left-hander because, like I said, you're at a net loss with Andrew Miller leaving town. Maybe a Brad Hand and Andrew Chafin, different left-handers that are available that we've talked about on the show quite frequently in this offseason. But bullpen needs to be priority number one. Let me know what you think the priority should be. If you think it should be a shortstop, if you think it should be a DH, let me know in the YouTube comment section. DM me on Twitter at LJ Fastball. DM the show on Twitter or Instagram at LO underscore Cardinals. Because that's an interesting discussion. But I just think when you look at at, at as, as a whole, you have a much stronger offense right now than you do a bullpen from the Cardinals standpoint. So I think if you lose out on a Kyle Schwarber, if you lose out on a Trevor Story to a, to a higher bidder, to a more aggressive bidder, more aggressive team than the Cardinals this offseason. You can live with that if, and I mean if, you get a bullpen piece or two. Because if the Cardinals get nothing in this offseason outside of Steven Matz, and I've talked about this many times, I'm a pro Steven Matz deal. I like that signing a lot. But if he is the only one you get, if he's the only move you make, then that's a net loss. It, it, it just simply is. Because, yes, you get the starting rotation back of Mike Liss and Hudson. Uh, you get a healthy Paul DeYoung and did a piece on him a while ago or an episode on him a while ago, excuse me. But the bullpen needs some reassurance. Just plain and simple. Talk a little bit more about that um, as well as how the lockout kind of lockout kind of affects that and, and the timing of it all coming up. One, Just one quick moment as we finish up the show. But first, I want to tell you guys about Built Bar, because it's that time of year, pretty much giving up on all my New Year's resolutions, but not this year, because normally I would, but not this year. I'm sticking to my resolution of eating right with Built Bars. I've got a case of them in my cabinet right now. Built Bar is the way to go if you want to remain healthy, but still enjoy a delicious treat because they are the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar. And if you tried Puffs, if you haven't, then you're missing out because it's one of the best tasting Built Bars around. Puffs are the first ever protein-infused marshmallow. You heard that right. Protein-infused marshmallow. All Built Bars are covered 100% in real chocolate. That includes the Puffs, 100% real chocolate. Check out the protein bars a calorie listing. They've got 130 calories, and I'll go further. 4 grams of sugar, 4 net carbs, 17 grams of protein. It's a little bit better than your average candy bar. So go to Built.com right now. Be sure to use the promo code LOCK15, L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5, to get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at Built.com. The Cardinals are not even the only team in their own division that are going to be trying to improve out of a chance to try, to try and win. Even the, the Brewers, who lost Avasil Garcia, are going to try and retake that division crown. you got the... Uh, Cubs that made a Marcus Stroman signing, so it'll be intriguing to see what happens there. Do they go after a reunion with Bryant? Do they go after a reunion with Rizzo? Do they re-sign Contreras long-term? The Reds, they, they've been pretty vocal, as Jeff Carr w- would talk about, in terms of not improving the team, in terms of not going out there and making a bunch of big moves. And we talked with Ethan, Ethan Smith of Locked On Pirates last week, and we know the Pirates aren't necessarily going um, to make any super big aggressive moves. So I think that this is the year, you know, that this is one of those years when the Cardinals can go all in and win a championship. Yes, you've got the powerhouse Dodgers. You've got the World Series, defending World Series champion Braves. You've got the wild card of the Giants. You've got the intriguing team of the Padres. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. Winning a championship never is. But, and I know that a lot of my my listeners are are anti-Rams because it's the history with St. Louis, Dan Crockett. I get it, but hear me out. They went all in on a championship team this season. They got Stafford. They got Miller. They had Donald. Uh, they, they had Jalen Ramsey. They went all in. Don't think they have a draft pick until 2026 or something like that, 2024, a first-round draft pick. They went all in on this season to win a championship this season, and much to St. Louis's dismay, much of to many, many St. Louisans' dismay and you talk about officiating and talk about a lot of different things. I understand. But at the end of the day, they won the Super Bowl. They went all in on a championship, and then they were able to cash it in. This is the kind of year that the Cardinals can do the same thing. Dodgers have been good for a very long time. 
Is this the year they're, not luck, but is this the year their talent of 100-plus wins runs out? The NL Central is extremely winnable. The Brewers have a daunting pitching staff. The Cardinals can combat that with a solid offense and an above-average pitching staff. In the East, you've got the Mets that could contend, and you've got the Braves World Series champion. I understand that. But this is a year, this is a type of year for a team like the Cardinals to go 100% all in and win a championship. Because there's a very good argument to say if the Cardinals beat the Dodgers in the National League wildcard game last year, they had a shot at the World Series trophy last year as well, a legitimate shot. Not just because they're in, they can they can win it. No, they're in because they can win it. It's a different mindset. It's a different terminology between, oh, they're in it so they could win it versus they're in it because they could win it. A lot of teams, sometimes, you know, I talk about a lot how the records reset when you get to October, right? Like once you make October baseball, you're 0 0, anything can happen. And I believe that. But there's a big difference between a team being able to make the playoffs, that's a playoff team, that it isn't necessarily a World Series championship team. The team that makes the playoffs that isn't a World Series championship team, caliber team, yeah, they made it. So therefore, they could win the World Series. The team like the, the the Giants, the Dodgers, the Braves, the, the Astros last year, they were teams that made the postseason because they could win it. That's how good they were. It's a different type of playoff team. And last year, the Cardinals were able to make the second wildcard team, not out of luck, not just a random fluke run, but because they were a legitimate team that could have won the World Series, and I truly believe that. Could have. Would have taken a lot, but they could have. But moving on here in 2022, this is a year to go all in. As soon as the lockout is over, be aggressive. That would be my mindset. That would be my advice. If I first would somehow be able to give some sort of advice to the Cardinals, even though they've won every had a winning season since 2007, uh, one of the most winningest franchises of all time, if I had the opportunity to give advice, my advice, be aggressive, no excuses. If you're aggressive and you go all in and they just don't sign and they just don't, they just, and you miss, that's okay. But go hard for a player. Go get a Joe Kelly. If you want to be aggressive and spend some money, go get a Kyle Schwarber to be your DH. Go get a Trevor Story to be your shortstop. Make a splash. But again, priority one, bullpen. Be aggressive in the bullpen. And now at this point, you know, John Mozeliak talked about it near the end of uh, the regular season last year saying, or excuse me, the start of the offseason this year saying, yeah, might be a slow offseason, so Cardinal fans just need to be patient. We as baseball fans have been patient long enough. Not, you know, derogatory against the Cardinals. We've had a lockout, right? But it, it's been a patient offseason. It's been a slow, dreary, dreadful, boring offseason. Be aggressive. Go all in. Make 2022 your make it or break it season. You got Tyler O'Neill coming off a career year. You've got Nolan Arenado starting to get comfortable. This might be one of the great, one of the last couple above average seasons you could expect out of Paul Goldschmidt. You've got Adam Wainwright and Yadier Molina kind of easing into the, the second part of their lives as they begin their last year of baseball. You've got Dylan Carlson and Harrison Bader ready to explode. You've got Tommy Edmond that can be an above average hitter and an above average fielder. You've got a strong starting pitching staff and the makings of a good bullpen. Add a little Joe Kelly, add a little lefty in there. That bullpen's going to be great. But this lockout, if if you want, if I'm looking for a positive in this lockout, if I'm looking and trying to find a diamond in the rough, it is this. This will force the Cardinals to be aggressive because they don't want to miss out on the talent. Because before you had all the time in the world, you know, we've got the whole off season for that. We've got we've got time to do this. You know, I'm sure that was a lot of teams' mindsets as well. Now, you know, let's say the the deal is signed on Monday. Uh, again, I'll talk about the timing of that in just a bit. Deal is signed on Monday, then you've got two weeks to spring, three weeks to spring training. Now, as I look at a calendar here, if it's signed on Monday the 21st, you got one, you know, week and a half until spring training starts. According to you know, that'll probably be negotiated and changed and things of that, but. You're going to have to be rapid fire action to still stay relevant in the National League. So finish up, talk more a little about the lockout. There are negotiations planned for hopefully every day next week, plans to resume on Monday. 
hopefully, my best case scenario, we get a deal next week. Major League Baseball Players Association, find a way to get a deal done next week. But I will leave you with this good news. Next week, even if there is no deal made, we will have five episodes of Locked on Cardinals. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We're going to have five episodes of Locked on Cardinals coming your way. It's going to be a fun week, so be sure to stay tuned. Subscribe on YouTube. Follow on your favorite podcasting platform. And until I see you guys next week for a five-episode week, another five-episode week of Locked on Cardinals as we get back into the daily action, hopefully next week. Uh, Hopefully the start of next week becomes a routine as we get a deal happen, but we will go five days a week no matter what. Be sure to stay safe, stay tuned. Excuse me. Be sure to stay safe, stay well, and have a fantastic rest of your day.